Okay, so in example four, the inequality is already set to zero. So we're going to start by solving for x by factoring. And this is going to factor as x minus 10 quantity squared is greater than zero. Now taking this factor and setting it equal to zero, I end up getting x equals 10. I'll place this value on a number line. Now I've got to make a decision whether to make this boundary an open or closed circle. Because there's no equal sign in the originally stated inequality, I'm going to make it an open circle. I'm now going to pick two test points, one on the right and one on the left. The one to the left I'm going to use is 0. The one on the right, I'm going to pick 20. And remember, I've got a choice of where I can plug these test values in. The very top inequality, which I'll call number 1, or the one right below it, which I'll call number 2. If your math is correct, then either one of these is acceptable because they should be equivalent. If I plug 0 into inequality number 1, then I end up getting 100 is greater than 0. And of course, that's true, so this, this region will be shaded in. Let's pick something like 20. This time, I'm going to use inequality number 2. If I put 20 in for x, I get 20 minus 10, which is 10, and 10 squared is 100. And again, we have 100 is greater than 0. And we know that's also true, so this region also is shaded. So the overall answer is going to be from negative infinity to 10, and then again from 10 to infinity. Okay, let's go to example 5. In example 5, we have to start by setting the inequality to 0. So I'm going to take the expression negative 13x minus 15 and move it to the left-hand side, leaving me with 2x squared plus 13x plus 15 is greater than or equal to 0. Now I'm going to factor, and this is going to factor in the following way. I have to think about what two monomials multiplied together will give me a 2x squared. And my choice is basically going to be 2x and x. Now I'm going to think about what's going to multiply to 15 and add to 13. So I'm going to put the 5 here and the 3 here, and both of these are going to get a plus. To make sure that I've done this right, I'm going to FOIL to check. So first gives me 2x squared, outer gives me 10x, inner gives me 3x for a net of 13x, and last is 15. So this has been factored correctly. Now I'm going to set each factor equal to 0 to get the boundaries. The first boundary will be negative 3 halves, and the second boundary will be negative 5. I'm going to go ahead and put these values on the number line. Because there's an equal sign in the originally stated inequality, these boundaries are going to take a closed circle. Now I need to pick test points. So I'm going to pick over to the left, uh, negative 10. In the middle, I'll pick negative 3. And over to the right, I'll pick 0. I have three choices for, for inequalities to plug in for. The originally stated problem, which I'll call number 1. And then these two manipulated forms, which I'll call 2 and 3. I'm actually going to start with the right-hand side, plugging in 0. And I'm going to use inequality number 2. If I plug in 0 into inequality number 2, I end up getting 15 is greater than or equal to 0. And of course, that's true. So that means this whole region is shaded in. Now let's pick the middle region, negative 3. And I'm going to use inequality number 3. And I'm not so concerned with the actual value as the plus or the minus. So if I plug in negative 3, I get 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. Just knowing that it's negative is all I need to know. If I plug in negative 3 into the second factor, I get negative 3 plus 5, which is 2, or positive 2. If I multiply a negative times a positive, the result is negative, which is never greater than or equal to 0. So the middle region fails. I will not shade that in. Let's go to negative 10, again using inequality number 3. If I plug in negative 10, I get negative 20 plus 3, which is negative 17, or just knowing that it's negative is good enough. And then negative 10 plus 5 is negative 5, or just negative. The product of two negatives is a positive, which is greater than or equal to 0. That means the left-hand side is a winning region. So the answer to this inequality would be negative infinity to negative 5 union negative 3 halves to infinity. And for our last problem, number 6, we have x squared plus x is less than 3. 
I'll start by moving the 3 to the other side so that everything is on one side and 0 is on the other side. Now, in terms of solving for x, in the first five examples, I was able to factor, and it was pretty quick and pretty easy. This one, unfortunately, is not factorable. The factors of 3 are never going to give me a 1, such as presented in the middle. So I'm going to need to use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Specifically for this problem, we get x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3, and all of this is over 2. Simplifying, we get x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 2. I'll place these boundaries on the number line. Now I've got to decide whether to make these boundaries open circles or closed circles. Because there is no equal sign in the originally stated inequality, I know it's going to be an open circle for each. Now, we run into a problem in determining test points to pick because these numbers, or these expressions, negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 2, are sort of challenging to work with. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a trick. I know that the square root of 16 is equal to 4, and I know that the square root of 9 is equal to 3. That means the square root of 13 is some number in between 3 and 4. For convenience sake, I'm just going to use 3.5. If I use that decimal approximation, I should be able to get a sense of where this boundary is. So we would have uh, negative 1 minus 3.5 over 2. This gives us negative 4.5 over 2 which is negative 45 over 20. And if we divide both the top and the bottom by 5, we get negative 9 fourths, which is negative 2.25. And now I know what test point to pick, anything below 2.25. So to be safe, I'll just say negative 5. Now I'll do the same sort of thing for the other expression, negative 1 plus the square root of 13 over 2. And I'll do that over here. So I'm going to say negative 1 plus 3.5 all over 2. So this turns out to be 2.5 over 2, or 25 over 20. Dividing top and bottom by 5, I get 5 fourths, which is the same as 1 and 1 and a quarter, or 1.25. What this means is, for the middle region, I can choose 0. And for the right region, I'll pick something larger than 1.25. So to be safe, I'll use positive 5. That's far enough over. So now I have a choice of, basically, here's number 1, inequality number 1, or inequality number two. I'm going to start with the middle region, plugging in zero, and I'm going to use the originally stated inequality. If I plug in zero, I get zero is less than three. And of course that's true, so this is going to be shaded in. Now let's plug in negative five. If I plug in negative five, I get 25 minus five, which is 20, 20 less than three. Well, is 20 less than three? The answer is no, so that's not going to be shaded. If I go to the rightmost region and plug in 5, I get 25 plus 5, which is 30. Is 30 less than 3? The answer is still no. So the winning region is going to be all of those things between negative 1 minus root 13 over 2 and negative 1 plus root 13 over 2. So I'm running out of space a little bit, but I'm going to put the solution set for this one up here at the top where I've got a little bit more room. So in summary, when you have a quadratic inequality, which we're going to abbreviate QI, which is pronounced chi if you play Scrabble, you're going to use a process called interval testing, which has the initials IT. So if you have a quadratic inequality, you're going to interval test, chi, it, cheat. This is the one math topic that you'll be allowed to cheat on.